Hey everybody, it's been a long day. It's been a long 24 hours for me, but it's master bracket time. If you find yourself with pencil and paper scoring people's March Madness brackets, ruining your weekends, you know, coworkers, bosses, throwing pencils and paper airplanes at you. Where's the score? Well, I had I had Kentucky, they won. How many points do I have? Don't worry about it. I got you covered. The master bracket is ready at least one of the versions of it i got three more i'm still working on but this one's ready and it's time to do a video for you so what you're looking at is the master bracket file this is where all the final results will be i'm going to show you how you bring in data from this file which is a bracket it's my sample bracket uh, this is the one that you would have sent out to all your entrants it's the one that's downloadable in my other youtube videos and i'll also have it downloadable in the description of this video so what i did was i filled out a sample bracket you type in your name up here and you fill in, you know, fill in everything, right? Pick your teams. Well, I decided to have Hampton go all the way to beat everyone. I'm sure that's not gonna happen, but I was just messing around. So pick, picked uh, a bunch of teams and I'm done. I filled in the total points. I think the final game is gonna be right there. And now I need to grab this range and you grab this range by going up here and at the very top, very close to the very top, there's this range called A picks. You click on Apex, and Apex is going to highlight this area down here, which is basically just the results in a linear rectangle there. Uh, everyone's results with their name. You're going to copy this. So, okay, so you highlighted it by clicking Apex, then you copy it. Now you go to the master bracket file that I've sent you, and you're going to go to this all data sheet. And here on this all data sheet, you're going to paste the results into these two columns of C and D, and here's where you're going to do it. You would do it in your first available cell. Your first available cell is going to be yellow. I, I wrote a formula to make them yellow. I already posted one set of entry picks in here, so I'm going to scroll down. This is my second entry. I'm going to go right here, and here's the special part. This is the part you got to do right. You can't just do a regular paste. You can't just press Control V. You got to do paste special values. It's this one, two, three. If you're using uh, a newer version of Excel on Windows, and if you're not, you want to go to paste special and values, paste special values, it's important because you want to paste the values that you pulled in from that other sheet, not the formulas which are underlying those, those cells. So values, as soon as you press values, it's going to fill itself in perfectly and it should go all the way down until the next entry line which is entry number three. And you're good. So you just pasted everybody in here, you're going to do that for all your entrants that you get back and you're going to paste them in, stack them one on top of the other all the way down. I have added a little error, error occurrence here. This is a new thing this year, and I did this in response to, some people like to change names on the entry entry sheet. They like to ch like go here and change different names uh, of the teams. They're not supposed to. I lock these cells, but uh, they also can easily be unlocked, and some people will change names. If you do that, that's gonna mess up with your scoring scenario because you're gonna create a team name that doesn't exist in the database of teams in the scoring bracket file. So what happens is, for example, say someone typed in the wrong name. For example, I'm going to move this over. You can always, you can always just get rid of this, by the way. Just get rid of it if you want. Um, so let's say that Kentucky or Purdue, for example, was spelled Purdue-ly wrong when, when it came in from the entry bracket sheet. If it was spelled wrong, you're going to get this error occurrence line which is gonna put a little one here if this name is not a name that is located in the team database. The team database I have here on the master bracket sheet over here. So don't delete this over here in, uh, in column A on the master bracket sheet. So where this is also gonna show up is right here on your standing sheet. I have this little question that says, do you have ins inconsistent name errors in your data sheet? If you do, you're gonna get a one here or more, you're gonna get a number that's two, five, 10, however many there are, and they're all gonna show up as being pink number ones here. So you need to fix those names. If you have errors, you don't know how to fix them, don't know how to put the right names in, email me, I'll help you out. But this is gonna show, because if you had this, you would screw up scoring otherwise, if, if somebody did this. So we're gonna go back to Purdue, you'll see the one will disappear as soon as I, oh, okay, well, look at that, it's one still there, why? I'll tell you why. Purdue needs to have a space on the end of it, a blank space, now it's gone away. So you don't want any errors over here. So we brought in two picks, okay? So how does the scoring work? How does everything work? Well, in the master bracket, as soon as results happen, you're gonna start filling them in. Let's say Hampton did win. Let's say Hampton somehow upsets Kentucky. Uh, not only do they upset Kentucky, but the first points, uh, the first points awarded in round one are one point. 
So if you had Kentucky over, uh, or Hampton over Kentucky, and Hampton won, because this is your master bracket, this is the final results that actually happened in reality, you go over to your standing sheet, this is a pivot table right here. This thing in red, it's a pivot table. Every time you update the master bracket or you add more entrance to your all data sheet, whenever you make an adjustment to the master bracket because the new games get finalized, you always need to refresh. Right click and refresh this pivot table and all of a sudden you're going to get points. You're going to get the current points by, by person's name, by entry. You're going to get their potential points remaining and their total uh, possible points. So only one game was uh, awarded and one of my picks had Hampton over Kentucky. This other pick right here, this other Ken's picks, did not have Hampton. It had Kentucky to win. Uh, so you can you can then use these things called slicers over here to kind of dig around and say, all right, well, what's going on in round one? You can just click round one. You can see there's 31 available points in round one. Why are there 32, 32 total available, 31 left for this player because they missed one game already? The uh, the way that the point scoring is structured is right here in the master bracket sheet. This gives you the amount of points that will apply for a winning pick in a certain round. So you can change this. I know somebody else had, uh, I think they doubled every round. It's like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So every round is 32 points total. You could do it like that. And then, you know, in the next round, if Hampton wins again, right? Go refresh. I have Hampton all the way through with this other kid's picks. I get awarded. I get awarded. I get awarded some points. I should get awarded some points there. Let's see what happened. Hampton in round one. Hampton. 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 Points awarded is two. So when you go back to the standing sheet, you should see current points through. Oh, that's because it's not in round one. I'm stupid. I had round one uh, highlighted here. Let's take the tiebreaker off the routes. You don't need to show the tiebreaker in the standings here, so um, so you, you don't have to show it there. So there you go. I do I do get three points because I won two of those games. And you can start opening these things up and seeing at what point you're having winning games. Uh, there's so many different things you can do with this. I'll probably do another video about how to really manipulate the standing sheet because you can start to, to do things like um, like take a look at all the entry picks and you can say, just having some fun with some slicers here. You can say, all right, well, you know, I know some teams that are still alive. You can just highlight teams that are still alive later in later rounds and it'll show you who has those picks and in what round they have those picks. Uh, by opening them up and seeing if they have potential points remaining. It's really, it's limitless what you can do. If you have any questions about how to organize these pivots and really get it to show a standings uh, view that you would like to see, we can make them do anything, so just let me know. Um, if you don't have slicers, if you're on a Mac or something, you don't have slicers, they're not going to show up, you're not going to see any of these, you have to use the filter bars, right? So if you were just looking at round one, this is a filter for round, you'd, you know, you'd say, all right, it's going to look a little different on a Mac, by the way, I just want to see round one stuff, so I'll show that. But you got to make sure to release that filter later when you're doing your cumulative standings, because you don't want it to be just round one, you want it to be the whole thing, right? Uh, so you can also filter by name, by entrance. You can sort these. If you go by the entrant ID and you want to sort this thing by, actually you won't be able to do this on the Mac, you'll only be able to do it on PC. You go to more sort options and you can do descending by like total possible points and it will sort the total possible points. There you go, this guy's got 192 total possible. So he's in the lead right now and he's also got three current points. So. That's the basics on how the standing sheet works, and I'll probably get into more depth with it later. Um, here's your scoring, like we said before. If you need to adjust that, uh, you need to fill in all of these when these playing games get uh, get finished off. You need to fill them all in, right? And then you just start filling this in, and then you, you press refresh, and you're in good shape. And after you've stacked all of your picks, you're in really good shape. So if you have any questions, of course, let me know. I am sending out the masters as we speak, and I'm also working on the upset bonus point master bracket. If you have upset points for different seeds or upsets in different rounds, I have a lot of people that have those versions. I'm getting those done as well tonight. So um, have fun with the master bracket. I hope it saves you a lot of time. That's why it's the main reason why I do it, because uh, we're not just saving paper here, but we're also saving immense amount of time and frustration.
We're, we're humans, it's the 21st century, we shouldn't have to do arithmetic all day with pencil and paper. That's the way I look at it. So Ken's Talk is out. Enjoy your file. Download links below. Email me at ken at kenstalk.com if you have any questions.